and welcome to another episode of Lex Education. It's the comedy science podcast where me, comedian Laura Lex, tries to learn science from her younger brother, Ron. Hello, I'm Ron. Hello, Ron. Hello, Laura. How's your week been? It's okay. I had Tuesday off because it was Judith's birthday. Yay! Girlfriend of the podcast, Judith. Girlfriend of the podcast, Judith. Um, (laughs) We went to the fair. We went on a ride. We feared for our lives. We left the fair. We got some beers. Nice. I went on a ride where I feared for my life yesterday. So yesterday we had the most torrential rain in Brighton Mm. and... um, uh, I had our oldest sister and her children and her husband here staying. So we went to a safari park, not really realising that it was going to be as torrential rain because the weather forecast said it was going to stop at midday. Reader, it did not stop. But me and oldest nephew went down a slide where, you know, you see it from a distance and you think, that looks fun. And then you get to the top and you think, like, everybody working here is 11. Has anybody done a health and safety check on this? Because <laughs> I'm just about to sit on a piece of plastic and rock it over the edge of a drop. Um, and then we did. And honestly, thought I was going to die, but didn't. Yeah, we, um, we, this was like classic fair stuff. Um, there was a, it was called Techno Power. It weirdly had pictures of Marvel, of the Marvel men, the Marvel boys. They're powerful. Um, all around it. Um, and you know me, like I'm very much average height. I think bang on in terms of feet and inches, I am average height. I had to keep my legs firmly clenched underneath myself because I was worried I was going to like hit them on stuff around. Oh. Um, and then, yeah, and then just the, the, the seat straps felt like they were flexing and creaking. Um, so, I, yeah, I was just in enormous pain and I paid seven euros to go on it. <laughs> Ron, your hair's got so much volume today. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's because, like, um, yeah, it's because I haven't sweated into it too much. Ah, is it, it's cooled down where you are too. Anyway, yeah. listen, thanks for joining us for the podcast. Um, we'll start, as always, with our thank yous to Pod Spike. We cracked um, a top 100 in a chart this week. I think we were in the top 100 of comedy podcasts in Austria. Thank yeah. you, Judith's family. <laughs> we're um, up to 61, I think. Yeah, well done, us. And we were top 172 globally for science, which, you know, top 172, given how many podcasts there are in the world and how little time we've been going, we are thrilled with that. So we want to say thank you to Pop Spike, without whom we wouldn't have particularly known how to market this thing. Um, and it might not have got off the ground and you might not have found it. And you guys are the reason it's doing so well. So thank you very much. And Ron doesn't want to say anything there. Okay, cool. So No, I can, I can. Um, Pod, Pod Spike, um, they, they helped us a lot. They sent us encouraging emails. We wouldn't have been in The Guardian or Pod Bible or... Uh, all right, bone to pick, though. Pod Bible. Who the fuck's Rob? Oh, no host did of they, this podcast called Rob. Did they get your name wrong? Let's they just change did. you to Rob. Hey, if it's in the Bible, those are the facts. You don't know the number of times I typed out the sassy tweet, thanks, Pob Bible, but then didn't send it. <laughs> oh, is this the start of Ron's beef? <laughs> well, I guess that makes sense, though, science versus the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Inaccuracies the... in the Bible that science is not happy with. Huh? Where's the, the pod um, review journal? <laughs> <laughs> So, what have you guys been up to this week? Um, Nick says they shared the podcast with their sister, and she said, sounds just like us. So, uh, that was on Twitter. So, it got me thinking, I want to know if anybody else is listening, and so is their sibling. I want to know about siblings listening to siblings, which is not as porny as it sounds. Um, Just about science. And Swerthers888 um, tweeted us to say they were playing um, episode catch-up. So I just wanted to say, if you're listening, I suppose if you're listening to this, we're way ahead in the future now on episode, like, 14 or whatever. But if you're listening and you're playing episode catch-up, we know that this podcast sort of lends itself to starting at the beginning and, and coming forward with us. But um, you can still get in contact with us on the, on the tweeters. We don't want you to think that intros are just for people who are in the present. Tibetan Trash Yak on Twitter has introduced the phrase accidental learning, which I think is a good phrase that we can use on this podcast. 
I feel like I do a lot of um, accidental not learning. I do, I've done a decent amount of accidental teaching as well, I feel, so that works. Woohoo! Woo-hoo! Now, Ron, we've got new information in, in the saga of where to put dog poo. Yes, yes, and I, I feel like this is definitive. I think this is the end of the saga. Well, who knows? We thought the last bit was definitive. Nobody knows. Reverend Colin Dipple, I hope your play went well, uh, they say you can't flush dog poo because it has too much bacteria and the sewage system is not designed for it. What a roller coaster of dog poo we've been on. Yeah, uh, that blows my mind, really, because, you know, like... Obviously, some poo's got to have more more baddies in it than others. But you'd think it would be, you know, like, close. Like, Well, no, because my dog can eat a fox poo without being ill. I guess. Like, the stomachs are just doing different things. But here's what I'm confused about, is why can't the sewer system be full of poo? Where's, where's the sewage going that needs to be not dog pooey? Yeah, I don't... I guess it gets turned back into water, doesn't it? I guess so. Is it just not built to extract the dog poo? So it goes through all of the systems, the human poo comes out, but then the dog poo is still in the water. How would the dog poo stay in, though? It's not just sieves and stuff, is it? I don't know. From I, from what I remember of being taught about sewage treatment, it's just they just leave it all in a big tank and the shit floats to the top. Oh. If you did a human poo in the garden and left it, would it go white like a dog poo does? No, because that's a disease, isn't it? And didn't that get eradicated? No. Mm. Or, like, it's less common. I don't think... It's less common, but I think that's just because people pick up their dog poo now. Hmm, I don't know. Um... Have, oh, so much dog Let us know at home. There's an experiment <laughs> for everyone listening. Lay a fat log in the garden and see what colour it turns. <laughs> Send all pictures to at Laura Lex <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> so there we go. That's what's been happening on the socials this week. Um, we are going into biology today. It's actually quite squabbly for a biology, but anyways, enjoy. Hello, Ronnie Honks. It's biology week. <laughs> you can't escape my biology. Although I was doing the research for today and I was a bit like, oh no, is this when Laura falls out with biology? Oh no, I've been looking forward to this. I was catching up on all my organelles. Is it lame? It's not maths, is it? Is it maths biology? We're not doing any maths today. All right. Okay. All right. But uh, why I thought you might go off it a little bit is because we're zooming back in. So can you remember what we covered last biology episode? Not in the slightest, but let me address my notes. Totipotency. Totipotent. Uh, Oh, we did cell differentiation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we covered stem cells. We covered a bit of cloning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we were kind of uh, looking at everything from a cellular level. Yeah, because it was cells. Yeah, which is quite on the spectrum of uh, biochemistry, quite far out. Cells are pretty big. Oh, right. So today we're going right back in. Um, We are on to a new sort of section of biology. (laughs) We are now going to be looking at transport in cells. Ooh. Um, I've got in my notes, (laughs) are there any shit jokes you want to make about that? (laughs) Uh, in my head, I actually did straight away think, ooh, like when people bust in with a file in a cake. What? In like oh, cells. Oh, you. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, went, you went down the cells uh, route. Yeah, I thought you were and gonna, then went further. I thought you were going to like make some kind of joke about trains or something. Train cells? That rhymes with brain cells. Is there anything we can do there? Let's not. Um, so we're getting into... Let us know on Twitter if you've thought of good puns on transport within cells. Uh, we are getting... Transport within cells. That's not something you want to do as a lone female. <laughs> there we go. I got one. Okay, we've got one in. We can um, move on now. We're getting into what I studied at university here. So this is... Pussy! Oh, I wish. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we're getting into kind of the, the grounds of molecular biology, biochem. Okay. We're, today we're going to be talking about diffusion. 
Oh, like when two people are really arguing and you just try and quietly and gently stop them. The definition of diffusion that we've got <laughs> is... Uh, diffusion is the spreading out of particles of any substance in a solution or particles of a gas resulting in a net movement from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Hmm. Could you translate that into layman's lame, layman's words? So, when things are in a busy area, they go to quiet a bit. <laughs> To concentrate? Not, not far off. Have you ever seen <laughs> Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know sexy Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, very well. He talks about chaos theory. Sure. I feel like, no, <laughs> this should have been the answer to that question. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so basically diffusion is the idea that... Um, so let's let's think about maybe someone dissolving a, um, a teaspoon of sugar in their tea. Ugh, losers. I judge people that have sugar in their Actually, tea. Actually, no, 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 I can do one better, I can do one better. Okay. When you put a tea bag in tea... Yeah, delicious. Um, all of the, the brown leaks out the bag and diffuses around the cup. Okay. So it does that and you... Is that a gas? No, that is a substance in solution. That was the first thing I said. What does solution... What is a solution? Um, something is in solution after it's been dissolved. So a solution oh. is one thing dissolved in another. So uh, a cup of tea is... Is that why you say the solution to the problem? Like you've solved the problem, you've dissolved the, the issue... I mean, it could be. I find when I Google these things, etymology very rarely makes sense. Uh, okay. It's usually like, from the French. Ooh, etymology would be a really good drag queen name. Yeah. If you did... You like, if you were Susie Dent and you were doing drag, etymology. Yeah, I'd watch that. So... When you put the tea bag into the tea... Oh, I hate it when we have to go back to the lesson. It's fun when we're just messing about. Why didn't we just do one of those messing about podcasts? We put, we're making a cup of tea. Okay. We put the tea, tea bag, bag in the tea. goes in the water. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So where the tea bag is, that um, all the molecules of tea start leaking out of the tea leaves, right? Yep. Yeah. So the water around the tea bag that becomes an area of high concentration of tea molecules. Yeah. Then what they do is they diffuse around the cup. Can you hazard a guess as to why things do this? It's a lot simpler than you might like. It's it's very simple. It's a simple concept. Like it's lo it makes it logically makes sense. Because you're stirring. No, you're not stirring. Uh. What do you mean? What? I was distracted. Look, I've drawn a T. <laughs> it's not very good. Um, oh, rude. Uh, why do the molecules move about the cup? Yeah, so what you will find if you, um, if you left that tea bag... Because they're heavy. No, don't just say things. If you left that tea bag <laughs> <laughs> on its own... You'd yeah. see, you'd come back to it 15 yeah. minutes later and the tea would be uniformly in the water. If it was heavy, it would all be at the bottom, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, maybe they just all like their own space. They just try and spread out as much as possible. Magnets. Don't just say stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> what you so often do is you say something like... You know, it's never right, but it's, it's sometimes it's a little <laughs> bit down the path. And then what you do is you shout magnets right afterwards. <laughs> right. Do you want to... Have I got it right? Did I get it right? No, What's you happening? shouted magnets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they want to space out, like sad boys do. Not necessarily that they want to space out. Right, so... If you... Right, so imagine the little tea molecules that are dissolved in the water. 
they're just going to bimble about completely randomly, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I bet coffee is much more marching around. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I bet it is. <laughs> Liquids don't have personalities. Yeah, they do. Hot chocolate's just like schmarming about like, oh, hello, everyone, I'm so luxury. <laughs> So the tea molecules are bimbling about completely randomly within the substance, okay? Okay. So, basically, the probability is that if there's more of them in one place, they're going to move to the place... uh, They're going to move away from that place just randomly. So then if there's many fewer of them uh, in the other place, then there's less of them to go back... That way. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? So it's totally random, but somehow they end up all spread out. Yeah, because it's totally random, they end up all spread out. Because if you have loads of them in one spot and they're all moving around randomly, just the probability is that they're going to move away from there. I don't understand then when you said it's logical that you're... It's logical as to why they end up spread out. And then the answer is, whoa, it just happens. That is not my definition of logical. But it's not really what I said. (laughs) (laughs) It pretty much is. You said that they just all randomly wander around and then after 15 minutes is up, when you come back, they've all got somewhere organised. No, it's, it's, it's a concept called entropy, which is basically the measure of chaos in the universe. All systems head for entropy. That sounds like <laughs> a bum thing, doesn't it? Entropy. I've got to go and have an entropy done. Oh, oh, that's going to sting. No. no yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> sounds like bum stuff. All systems head for entropy if, they're not, if, if energy's not put into them. So... Why are you scowling? I'm not scowling, but it's like, why is this something you've got to teach kids? Because this affects your daily life all the time. Like, entropy is why headphones get tangled in your pocket. Why? Because of tea? No, because of entropy. What's entropy? I just said (laughs) it's a measure of chaos. How you can't measure chaos? Yes, you can. Don't be stupid. What? What measure? What are you talking about? All systems head for chaos. So think about it this way, right? You put your headphones into your pocket. There is, out of all of the different like configurations that your headphones could be in, there is only one of them where they're not tangled up. So just statistically, as they're moving around in your pocket as you're walking up and down the stairs or whatever it is you do all day, they're going to get jostled about. And then statistically, they're going to end up in one of the billions of configurations where they're a bit tangled up. Yeah. That makes sense? Sure, yeah. So now imagine a million tea particles in a cup of tea. A million No, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Let me finish the fucking thought while I'm on it. Yeah, okay. Imagine a million tea particles in a cup of tea. There is only one configuration where they're all around the tea bag. But there are lots of configurations where they're kind of all spread out about the cup. So statistically, the system is going to end up in a configuration where they're all spread out. Yeah? Yeah, that makes sense. What part of this are we learning? Are we learning about tea or... And We're learning about tea. diffusion. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's one of those episodes. <laughs> Sometimes a bit of this will really make sense to me and then that turns out to be the thing you were using to explain a different bit to me. Yeah, but I think it's really important to kind of get the groundwork because diffusion is kind of like... It's, it's, a, it's a physics and chemistry constant. It's, it's always happening. Molecules will always do this. And then what our bodies have done is find ways to manipulate this so that we work. Um, oh, sneaky. That's where it gets really interesting. So, oh, it's raining. Is, it is. Is it raining where you are? It is. It's dripping down the Velux. It's lovely. Me too, Ron. Oh, that makes me feel connected to you, even though we're far apart. Two worlds, one family. So, some substances can diffuse across membranes, i.e. 
in and out of cells. Okay? Okay. What are you looking at on your screen? I'm just changing the brightness of my screen because yeah. it got dark. <laughs> yeah, because you, you went a bit cross-eyed. <laughs> but it was because I wanted to pay more attention, not because I was being naughty. It's really raining here. Yeah, I can hear it. It's quite nice. It is lovely. We're have to do sound effects for this bit of the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so some substances can diffuse across membranes, not all. We'll come to that later on. But things like oxygen and carbon dioxide, they are passed via diffusion through cell membranes to get, say, out of your lungs when you breathe. Okay. Okay. What did you say? I say... <laughs> so some stuff goes through, some stuff doesn't. That's a non-learner. No, that's... That, it's, it's, you need to know that it can... Cause you know, nothing goes through the teacup, but some things can go through a cell membrane. So we were talking about diffusion in liquids before. Now we're talking about diffusion in and out of cells. But they are liquids. No, they're not. Oh. <laughs> I thought they were made of goo. They are. So then they're liquids, aren't they? Not really. But they're in a bag. So diffusion... Uh, I've, I've written this sentence just... To summarise, before we move on, <laughs> diffusion is a passive process, i.e. we don't have to put in any energy to make it to happen, right? Mm-hmm. It's a passive process of things moving from high concentration to low concentration. That's called a concentration gradient. That feels like my life. I started out concentrating as hard as I ever would, and it's just getting slowly worse as I get older. But that doesn't mean, but because it's a passive com, uh, process, doesn't mean that we can't influence it at all, okay? Yeah, okay. So, can you think of any ways that we as bodies might be able to influence diffusion? I think I can hear your rain as well. <laughs> um. Do we shake around a bit? What would that do? (laughs) (laughs) It would move things. (laughs) Do we... uh, hmm, Let's have a think. Give me an example. (laughs) <laughs> like tell you an answer <laughs> no but like I don't even understand so um so how about when we're breathing mm-hmm. yeah so when we <laughs> when we take in a breath of air yeah what how might that affect diffusion that's happening in your lungs what are we trying to get rid of carbon dioxide yeah and so the fresh air that we bring in has oxygen yeah we're trying to get oxygen in let's just think about carbon dioxide for a second yeah so we breathe in fresh air yeah the air has (laughs) less carbon dioxide less carbon dioxide than we do (laughs) our blood in our lungs (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So we've created a concentration gradient from high to low in our lungs. So the carbon dioxide is going to flow out of our blood. Yeah. Now, prove to me... Does the air not go around our lungs then? It goes in and it goes out. There's a bag that fills up and then empties again. What goes around our blood? Oxygen. Everything. What is air? <laughs> air is like 80% nitrogen, 18% oxygen, 2% the rest. So we just take in a load of that and then we... The oxygen goes round in a little train around the blood and the nitrogen grabs hold of the carbon dioxide and goes back out again. So the blood 
we'll talk a bit about why we've got a blood system um, in a bit. But oh, I hate blood system. That sounds like a band I wouldn't listen to. The blood is the transport system for everything in our body. So it is taking oxygen away from the lungs to our body to feed that lovely, lovely oxygen. And but it is simultaneously bringing carbon dioxide to our lungs to shit it out when we breathe. Why did we... How did we get carbon dioxide everywhere? Uh, you make it when you respire. So the, the reaction that uh, mitochondria do to make all this ATP, that is the... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Energy <laughs> currency of the cell. <laughs> I, thought, I thought for a second you might have retained some information. Do you know what? I nearly said cloaca. <laughs> and then I just knew that that wasn't right. But um, I hadn't, yeah, I couldn't get to the right word. <laughs> no, <laughs> you. You were quite far off. You were going to say a bird's all in one <laughs> vagina, asshole. But I didn't. <laughs> Thank you and well done. One point. So when the mitochondria makes the ATP, yeah. the energy currency of the cell, it uses up a bit of oxygen and it produces a bit of carbon dioxide. And we need to get that out of our cell. Got yeah. Okay. What are we talking about? So we're talking about diffusion in our lungs yes so all i was saying is that um we bring in fresh air because that's got a low amount of carbon dioxide so we create a concentration gradient from blood to air of carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide flows out so we've influenced that by gathering the carbon dioxide in one place to make the most of diffusion the opposite. So we've brought in fresh air to get rid of all of the carbon dioxide in the air in our lungs. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if we hadn't sent the blood train round to collect all the carbon dioxide, it wouldn't have diffused because it would have already yes. been spread out. Okay, yeah, sorry. So I, we've put I it in one place. I thought you were implying place. that we kind of hold blood in our lungs. No, it would be no. mad to think there was blood in our lungs. <laughs> no, there is blood in our lungs. Oh, it- well, that's what you mean! <laughs> We're not, we're not keeping it in our lungs. It's flowing through our lungs. Yeah, but no, we're keeping the carbon in our lungs. No, the carbon's just flowing through on the blood, but then it's getting yeah. taken out. But we, oh We're getting bogged God. down in something we don't need to. Um, and then at the same time, we're creating a concentration gradient of oxygen, where the oxygen in the fresh air is really high. How did we create that? By breathing it in, because it's just higher in the air than it is in our body. Okay. Because we use it up in our body. So we're yeah. breathing in, we're bringing in fresh oxygen. We have a concentration gradient from high to low, oxygen flows in. Yeah. Because if you think about Is it, it, it can't be the same cloud that's raining here and in Brussels, can it? Could be, it's not that far. A cloud's that big? Sometimes. Wow. Don't, don't you drive around for like a living or something? Yeah, and the weather changes constantly. Yeah, but have you never, like, driven for, like, an hour and it all been under a cloud? Yeah, but I thought they were usually different clouds. Oh. So, a really cool example <laughs> of... <laughs> a nice example of us influencing... A diffusion like this is in our kidneys. Do you know Ooh. what kidneys do? Um, is it piss? Yeah, it's kidneys. Like, it's like sorting out um dirt out of your liquid supply in your body. Out of your blood. Oh, blood again. Yeah, blood. Blood gets <laughs> everywhere. Um, Not in your lungs. No, it does go through your lungs. You just don't store it in there. Where do you store it? Nowhere. It just goes round and round. Right. Um, There's no blood organ. It's just... It's made in the blood caves. And then the heart pumps it, I suppose. Yeah, I'd say probably the heart is the blood organ, but it doesn't store it. It's well creepy that blood's made in your bones. That just feels wrong Oh. Yeah. I think it should be made in the heart. Have we checked? <laughs> it's not. Yeah, we're pretty sure it's made in the bone caves. Yeah, okay. 
So a nice example of uh, us influencing diffusion like this is in our kidneys. So kidneys okay. make piss. They clean the blood. Stuff comes out of blood and into so the piss. So my piss was in my blood? Yes. Oh, crazy. Like, basically what the kidneys kind of do, and we'll talk about how this works in a second, they just kind of skim the scum off the top of your blood and then you piss it out. Gross. But they don't do that via wipes or hooks or scoopers. They do it <laughs> by diffusion. Okay, so they have a low <coughs> concentration of piss molecules and then when the blood comes through the kidneys, the piss molecules sloop in. Yeah, so there is a structure within your kidneys called the nephron and this is where the piss... Like Nora Ephron. This is where... (laughs) (laughs) This is where the piss starts. This is like the source of the piss. What is? The nephron? The nephron, yes. I'm Googling nephron. It looks like a little loop. Like, kind of like a, the, the, like the end of oh, a shepherd's crook. It's like a crook. test tube. Don't Google things. I'm doing the teaching here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so it looks like a little loop like that. Basically, you have the piss tube where the piss is getting made. And you have... Getting made? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Do we not just draw for five minutes <laughs> that our kidneys make piss? Yeah, I don't think they've been making it. I thought it was just ending up there. Why are you caressing yourself with a glue scraper again? I love my glue sticks. They're one of my best investments. You should get some. I won't. Right. There's so much soy sauce in my computer keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> did the glue? Did you rub it in there with glue sticks? No, I dropped. I was eating dumplings and I dropped one, and it all went in there. Anyway, so we were talking about piss. Yes. In the nephron, you've got the tube where the piss is getting made, going that way. Going what way? The listeners can't see your fingers. Going one way. <laughs> oh, sassy. <laughs> and you have the tube with the blood going the other way. Okay. Because, right, so let's start at the start of the piss. The Let's start at the very beginning. The start of the piss is the cleanest piss, right? So just water? Let's say yes, just water. <laughs> it's the start of the piss. Okay. At this point, because the blood is going the other way round the nephron, yeah. the cleanest piss is next to the cleanest blood, right? Because the, the blood, by the time it's gotten round here, has gone past all the rest of the nephron and has lost piss molecules. Wait, what shape is the nephron? It's like a shepherd's crook. It's like a little loop, yeah. Like a rainbow? No. Like, you, they, you, 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 saw, a, you saw a picture. I'm just, I'm confused now about how everything's working. All right, I'm going to Google a nephron again, and then I'll describe it to the listeners. Okay, can you WhatsApp me what you're looking at so I just know what what you're looking at? (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't trust me at all. Sleepless in Seattle. It's a different cloud because it stopped raining here, but it's still raining where you are. Could just be a rainy bit of the cloud and a (laughs) non-rainy bit of the cloud. Mm, That's true. So... There's like a test tube shape, and then there's lots of wigglers going in and out. It's really raining. I can mm. see blue sky now. Oh, that's the end of the cloud that we're both sat under. <laughs> like two little eors on two little continents. Yes, so this red bit that's going in. So, there's like a test tube, and then there's um, a red wire going round that turns blue halfway through, and it's got different, like, loops that go in and out of the test tube shaped wire. Mm. Yeah, so ignore the glom- glomerulus bit. Mm-hmm. 
Um, we're just just we're just looking at the the loop at the at the bottom. This is just mm-hmm. the specific part of the nephron that I wanted to talk about. Okay. So the the clean piss is coming from that little dot uh, where the glom- glom- glomerulus is. Okay, so that's pumping like fresh water into the system. And then, so the renal artery where that's coming in, that's dirty blood. Okay. Dirty blood. That's dirty, dirty blood. So the dirty blood is coming in. Mm-hmm. It's going all the way around the nephron. Yep. And then it's coming to this bit where then it's going out to the renal vein. Yep. So then we've got clean piss coming down from the, the ball at the top. Yeah. Next to the blue vein. Yeah. Which represents the cleanest blood. Yeah. So then, as the piss follows down this bit, you see that it's going the opposite way to the blood. Yes. So the blood is going clockwise round the tube and the the piss is going anti-clockwise round the tube. Yeah. So, because of that, you will get steadily dirtier piss yeah rubbing up against steadily dirtier blood yeah so what that lets it do is that means that there is always a concentration gradient so that the toxins and the piss molecules are always flowing out of the blood right yeah because if you didn't do that if you just had the dirtiest blood starting at the top coming in next to the cleanest piss what would happen is all the piss molecules, well, half the piss molecules would kind of come out of the blood and then it would just reach an equilibrium. Yeah. Remember our cup of tea? The, the molecules just spread out evenly? Yeah. Whereas what this is, this system does is it forces a concentration gradient the whole time because you have the cleanest piss next to the cleanest blood. Because it, it, like that really clean blood that's coming out the other end... If that was next to the, um, if if that was flowing just the same way, then stuff would be coming back out the piss and into the blood because they would be yeah. passing stuff between each other. You see? Yeah. Yeah. So that's just the nephron. It's a good example of how we use diffusion to do a process passively like that. Yeah. Okay. But, um, so is that why? At, why at night then is your piss darker? Just because you're dehydrated because you spend eight hours not drinking. Well, I spend eight hours not drinking all day. Yeah, and I imagine your piss is some kind of crimson gold. <laughs> <laughs> I hate drinking water. Why that's really useful is because, as I've said, diffusion is a passive process. does not cost us any energy. We, yeah. What we could have done is we could have built active systems in our blood that like grabbed piss molecules and pumped them out. But that would take a huge amount of energy. So what we've done is our kidneys have harvested a natural phenomenon and piss comes out. Smashing. (laughs) I feel like you're reacting. We're not caring and that hurts. No, I'm really happy that, um, that, I'm really happy for that. That is good. Uh, That is good. Do you know what? The thing is, I've really understood that and I already know that when you ask me in about 20 minutes in this episode, but a week in our time, you will ask me to describe the nephron and all I will remember is the word tubular. (laughs) Actually, nephron's not in the syllabus, so I won't ask you about that. What the fuck, Ron? So why did we just do that? Because it was a nice illustration of the concept we were trying to learn. What are we... Diffusion. Diffusion. Yeah. And how our bodies use it. But we will come into more stuff like the nephron soon. But just not on that scale. I was just... I thought it was nice. I loved it. Don't get sad. Students should be able to explain how different factors affect the rate of diffusion. Factors which affect the rate of diffusion are the difference in concentrations, brackets, concentration gradient. Can you imagine how the con- how a difference in the concentration gradient might affect the rate of diffusion? So if you had loads and loads of particle A in one solution and quite a few in particle B, the diffusion would be slower than if you had loads and loads in one solution and none in another. 
Perfect. Yes. Yes, I got my first perfect. I'm going to write that down. First perfect. Yeah, so um, in, in a few words, the higher the concentration gradient, the quicker the rate of diffusion. Yeah. Okay. How do you think the temperature might affect the rate of diffusion? It wouldn't. Why do you think that? Because it's not an energy thing. No, I'm afraid the temperature is going to speed. The higher the temperature, the quicker the rate of diffusion. Why? Because when particles in solution are at a higher temperature, they move around quicker. Oh, I thought you said it didn't take up any energy. It doesn't take up any of our energy. Oh, uh, but the molecules still use energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it easier to dissolve a, a teaspoon of sugar in cold water or hot water? I don't know. I would never put sugar in water. One, water's disgusting. Two, I don't like sugar. Have you drinks. ever dissolved anything in anything? Have you ever made instant coffee? Yes. Is it easier to dissolve that coffee in hot water or cold water? Hot. Yeah. No, the same. No. No hot. Hot, yeah. Is that diffusion? Yeah. That's dissolving. But it's the same concept. It's the same okay. principle. Okay. It, it happens so the quicker. Hotter, the hotter, the quicker, the better. Yes. Okay, last one. Diffusion is like sex. The hotter, the quicker, the better. I wouldn't know. Um, Ew. What? Well, that rain is making me need a wee. Stop. And we've been talking about a lot of things. <laughs> um, last one. The surface area of the membrane. How will that affect the rate of diffusion? Well, the bigger the surface area, the more space things have got to run through the door. Yes. The answer for all three of these has been the more, the quicker. The more, the quicker, the better, the hotter, the gooder. Now, I wanted to take another aside here to just talk about <laughs> surface area for a bit. All right. Um, surface area is super key in biology it will come up loads because increased surface area allows reactions to happen quicker and it allows energy to be transferred quicker okay if you think powders dissolve quicker than clumps of stuff right yeah because there's more surface area for the water molecules to react with whatever you're trying to dissolve yeah things that are smaller cook quicker right yeah because there's more surface area for the heat to get into that thing Yep, that makes sense. That's an easy one. Lots of evolution has been done to increase or decrease surface area. It's why elephants... Put that down. Put it down. It's noisy. Put it down. It's why elephants have big ears and polar bears have small ears, right? What happened while I was fiddling with that thing? The subject feels like it's changed massively. <laughs> Why do you think elephants might have big ears and polar bears have small ears? Big ears, elephants need to fan themselves to keep cool. It's not about fanning themselves. Elephants never forget. <laughs> <laughs> elephants. Elephants. Did you know kangaroos lick their forearms to cool down? Yep. I did know that. Elephants. <laughs> well, they'd look stupid with small ears because they're massive animals. I Imagine can't an elephant if... with tiny polar bear ears. It would look ridiculous and they'd get bullied into extinction by the other animals. I, I can't remember if it was last episode or the episode before. Do you remember when we were talking about how you've got idea permanence, like yeah. problems? Like, could you maybe sort of think back a minute or two <laughs> to what we were talking about and maybe, like, factor that in to answer yeah, the question? you said a larger surface area lets them absorb more stuff. I said increased surface area allows reactions to happen quicker and energy to be transferred quicker. Do the ears act like solar panels? The opposite. They let it cool down. Why? Because they've got more surface area, so they can shed more heat through it. Well, surely they absorb more heat, too. Yeah, but then they... 
fan them to ink, move cool air over them and they have so blood vessels. So they just fan. I said they used them as fans. Yes, but I said that they don't fan themselves. The ears fan to move air off the ears. They're not flapping air over their bodies to cool their bodies down is the point. So what are these fucking ears doing? <laughs> I don't get that at all. They're bigger so they let more heat out but magically no more heat comes in. If you've got a tiny ear... Less heat's going to get in that ear. Yeah, but also less heat's going to get out. Cause not, so who cares then? It's an because e- not all, equilibrium. Because <laughs> elephants aren't... Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> elephants aren't cold-blooded. They're mammals. They're making heat. So, oh, okay. So they need to get rid of heat. Right, that's changing it, Yeah. Lizards don't even have ears, do they? They just have holes in their heads. Exactly. And then polar bears, they want to conserve as much heat as possible that they're making, so they have tiny ears so they don't lose so much. You will notice that animals in cold places tend to be rounder with, like, less leggy limbs and stuff because that decreases the surface area to mass ratio. I'm very round and small with less leggy limbs. Yeah, and you don't live on the equator. No. If you lived on the equator, you'd look like Dame Kelly Holmes. I'd like that. Single-celled organisms. Uh, We're back onto the syllabus now. I like that you used her full title, Dame. (laughs) Dame Kelly Holmes. Um, uh, We're back onto the syllabus now. We're off my aside about surface area. Single-celled organisms have relatively high surface area to mass ratios. Okay. So they can get what they need. What can? I didn't listen. Single-celled organisms. What's a single-celled organism? Like a bug. (laughs) What do you mean by a bug? Like a bug. Is that a single-celled organism? Like a woodlouse? Do you you think that? Do you really think that? (laughs) Well, not now you've said that. What's a single-celled... An amoeba... Is that them? Like a bacteria or... Yeah, a bug. Okay. That's not the same thing. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It is how I think about them. (laughs) But wood lice have millions of cells. Okay, so they are not single-celled organisms. Yeah. And I've learned that now. I'll write that down. Wood lice. Single-celled organisms, like bacteria and that, have relatively high surface area to mass ratios, and because they're so small, they can get what they need just by schlupping it through their membranes via diffusion and stuff like that. So they're heavy, no, they're light, but lots of skin. Yes. Okay. And as we know, high surface area lets stuff come in more. Yeah. Yeah. This obviously isn't, uh, you know, so they can just absorb what they need through their membrane, through their skin, okay? Yeah. This isn't true of multicellular organisms like you and me. No. We don't just breathe through our skin. Which is a shame. Can you think of some ways that we've developed to cope with these, with this problem, that we can't just, like, let molecules just kind of diffuse around our bodies? We've got lungs. Yep, that's one. So we have, so lungs are an example of something called an exchange surface. So multicellular organisms have places like lungs to, um, where they can exchange stuff. So we exchange carbon dioxide out with oxygen coming in. Like a fish's gills is another example of that. A kidney is another example of that because we're exchanging the stuff in our blood that we don't want and cleaning it. Okay. Yeah. The, what is the other thing that we've talked about that helps us with this process? So we're also too small to just let it diffuse around our body passively. So we're too big to let it diffuse around our body passively. We talked about it a lot earlier. Nephron? No. <laughs> we're hot. We are. Blood. Blood. We've got blood. Yes, we've got blood. So blood is a transport system. So we don't. That's let... what we're studying today. <laughs> Funny man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So we have blood that can pump things around our body and move it around. St- 
students should be able to explain how the small intestine and lungs in mammals, gills in fish, and the roots and leaves in plants are adapted for exchanging materials. How do you think the small intestine might be adapted for exchanging materials? What is the small intestine trying to do, first off? Do you know what? I've got no idea. And I'm glad we're covering this because I've never understood it. I thought, like, when you did different types of poos, they'd come out of your different intestines. And then I, got, and then I was like, that can't be right because only one of them's wired up to your bum hole. So I don't... I, I have no idea what a small intestine is for. So you were pimpling about one day and you thought that and then but it never occurred to you to maybe find out. No. <laughs> so basically... Stomach. Yeah. Goes into the small intestine. Right. Small intestine's very long. And then the small intestine plugs into the large intestine. Large intestine plugs into the colon. Colon is your butthole. Okay. So the small intestine is largely where we get all of the nutrients out of our food. And then the large intestine is where we get water out of our food. Okay. So the, the small intestine... Has a large surface area, like it's long and wiggly. So I imagine then there's lots of blood vessels like interchanging around the edges of it to do the nephron thing, but an intestine version. Yes. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Um, yes, so both of those things very, very true. So it's very long, so we've got lots of time to do it. There's lots of blood vessels around your gut, um, which is why, you know, like uh, getting hurt in your gut is so bad and stuff. Oh. Um, something that I wouldn't expect you to know, but the, um, the surface of your intestines are covered in something called villi. Villi! Villi, yes. I remember that from school science. Little um, finger-like protrusions, except they're, they're very, very small. Um, so if the surface of, them, of the intestines is all like that, like covered in little prodders like yeah. this. That's even more surface area. Even more surface area, yeah. Like a hairbrush. Exactly. Okay, what about lungs? So, again, really similar, apart from they're not long. No, but they have loads of blood vessels in them, don't they? Like tree branches sort of spreading out. Yep, so they, yeah, loads of, loads of blood vessels, loads of surface area as well. So you have your, um, your bronchi and your bronchioles and then your alveoli. You might remember that word from science. I think that's a garlic dip. Mm, delicious. No, they actually look like a bunch of grapes, and they're kind of like blah blah blah, like knobbly. Um, okay. And then those have blood vessels all wrapped around them. The surface area of your lungs, if you spread it all out, everything that's in it, it would be about the size of a tennis court. Oh. Yeah. Um, gills in fish, the same. Lots of blood vessels, lots of surface area for getting the oxygen out of the water. The roots uh, of Plants, exactly the same again. Lots of surface area. So roots actually have similar structures to villi in some ways. That they'll have like tiny little, almost microscopic little bits coming off of them. And then leaves. What about leaves? What are they trying to do? Catch the sun? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So photosynthesis. Yeah. So they have a like flat surface area, like a solar panel type thing. Exactly, yeah. Have you ever noticed that the top of the leaf is never really the same as the bottom of the leaf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because the top is designed for catching the sun, photosynthesis. The bottom is designed for something called transpiration, where it gets rid of the oxygen and the the water vapour. Ah, clever. Mm -hmm. The effectiveness of an exchange surface is increased by having a large surface area, Yep. A membrane that is thin to provide a short diffusion path. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, a the, small door. The closer your blood and the air can be, and it yep. still be safe, the better, the quicker it's going to do. In animals, having an efficient blood supply. So if you can keep on having like clean, clean blood coming through, so you can keep on taking stuff out, or if you're um, going back to the piss example, keep on having dirty blood there, so the concentration gradient's always high. Um, And then the other one for gaseous exchange, it being ventilated. Same thing. So if we can keep on processing air, it going in and out, there's always going to be that high concentration gradient so we can get really efficient oxygen intake. 
So when you have a heart attack and the blood stops pumping and stops moving, the problem then is that all these different exchanges are stopping and building up and that's what's that's what sort of kills you, like the air isn't getting transferred and the... Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's oxygen... Um... It's oxygen not getting around your body ultimately, but yes, right. you are right there in your lungs. You then won't have the the um, the 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 concentration gradient, so it's not going to happen. Hmm. Um, and that is diffusion. Okay, there was nothing I hated there except that first bit about diffusion. <laughs> Once we spent fifteen minutes just kind of working out the base concept. Well, because I just, I think that was your fault, but I'm editing this one and I usually listen back to it and realise it wasn't. (laughs) Okay, all right, well, let's see how this goes then next week for the quiz. We'll see you after the sting. For the quiz. Okay, so full disclosure, and this will time when the recording of the episode is, between doing the lesson and doing this quiz, I did an ultra marathon, and I feel like all information in the world popped out of my head, let alone whatever the hell we were doing last episode. I'm also in Norway, um, so I don't even have my my beautiful notepad with me, which is real gutting. You didn't gutting. bring your notes. No. <laughs> I just, I, 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 like, I got home from the marathon Monday afternoon and then I had five hours to try and recuperate and then I had to pack and leave and um, it was all a bit of a scramble. So, nope, we're flying buck naked on this one. Shit, because we hit episode 10 and I thought, let's kick it up a notch. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I I can't remember what we did. Was it chemistry last time? I feel like it was good. No, it was biology. Oh. You didn't uh, love it. You did not love it. Did I not? No. Oh. All right. Well, look, I'll give it my bestest. Gonna so find my Zen place in my head with all the answers. Eleven points up for grabs, Laura. Okay. Are you sure? You don't want to change that halfway through like usual? (laughs) It might change. We'll see how it goes. (laughs) Okay. For one point, what is a concentration gradient? I know this. I know this. It's when loads of stuff like maybe dirty blood, dirt molecules or oxygen is in one thing, one solution. It's dissolved in a solution and it, it... there's another solution next to it that doesn't have much of that in. So, so you have a high concentration in one solution and a low in another. Yeah, yeah. And what does that cause things to do? Um, go across the membrane into the one with the low concentration. I can't remember what that's called. Dissipation or something. Dissolving? Is that what the lesson was about? Yeah, the, the, it was <laughs> everything that we talked about. <laughs> no, I remember everything we talked about. I can't remember that word. What did it begin with? A D. I knew it was a D. You see, I said two D words, didn't I? I knew it was a D. Um, that is called... And it's free. It doesn't cost any energy. And the nephron. And... Um, oh, no. What's it called? I'm going to give you the point. Yeah, thank you. Um, a, bit, a little bit generously, because there were some erroneous things that you said. Did I? Uh, what did I say it was erroneous? Does it uh, just, just, well, I mean, you, you never said the word diffusion. Diffusion! Uh, <laughs> which is that's it! The whole thing. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it doesn't have to be across a membrane. Remember, we talked a lot about cups of tea and it just kind of diffusing. Oh uh, yeah, but that was the shit bit. That was the bit I didn't really think was right, so <laughs> I didn't retain that bit. But as you have walked uh, an ultra marathon for charity, you can have a mark for that. Thank you. Okay, can you diffusion. diffusion. Can you name three factors that affect the rate of diffusion? Um, surface area, the uh, temperature. And steepness of concentration gradient. 
Uh, yes, three marks. You look so confused and surprised when I get them right. Your little <laughs> face is just like, ah, oh, no messing about. Yeah, yeah. Maybe walking was what I needed to, like, restart my brain. Yeah, maybe, like, all of the stuff that you've mashed out of your feet by <laughs> slamming them into the ground that long has gone and powered up your brain somehow. Wouldn't that be cool um, if I was just a genius from now on? <laughs> It would be. It would really change the, the podcast, to be It honest. would, wouldn't it? It would be so surprising. Yeah. We'd get some great publicity, though, wouldn't we? Yeah, but then people listening back, it would be like the, the first season of Blackadder, where everyone's a bit like, oh, no, you don't have to, yeah. you don't have to watch that. That's a bit <laughs> shit. Just the first ten episodes, just someone really not getting it. <laughs> okay, question number three. Can you give me three examples of exchange surfaces in nature? In nature? Yeah. I mean, are we nature? People are nature, aren't they? Animals are nature, yeah. Okay. Um, gills on a fish. Yep. Nephron. You love the nephron. I love the nephron. I Honestly, I explained it to Danny at about 3am on the ultramarathon in a bid to stay awake. I just ramblingly explained what the nephron was <laughs> to me like an hour and she had no idea what I was talking about but did she I did ask? explain it no I just started explaining it I just needed to talk about something to keep my brain active um so the nephron my fave gills and um the the small intestine I think was one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Nice, yeah. God, I'm smashing this quiz. Okay, and then last one. Um, so you've, you've scored seven points so far. Okay, okay. Name four ways that an exchange surface can be made more effective. Isn't that the same as what things that affect it? Diffusion? Yeah, kind of, but, you know... What can we, as animals that have exchange surfaces, do to make them more effective, basically? <laughs> These kind of questions confuse me, because, because I find it weird that it is us doing it, but it's also not us doing it, you know? Like, because in my head I was like, I'll get a bigger surface area on our lungs, but I can't just do that. But we have done that. But we've done it via evolution. But it's yeah, not so that's, us, but so it is. So ding, us. that's one answer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I like your dead man ding. So ding, ding that's one answer. Um, but then this is just the same answers. So we could warm, uh, warm them up. Apply heat. Keep them warm. <laughs> warm. <laughs> Magnets. Um, Moon. I'm not going to give you that. Why? Because we are a certain temperature for other reasons, and we don't have really, let's say, really hot lungs. <laughs> no, but you could run lots of blood through them, because blood's warm. Okay, ding. Having an efficient blood supply, but not... <laughs> <laughs> not for heating purposes. <laughs> it's not about hot blood. Um, you could always keep the gradient optimal. So in the nephron, for example, you always have the dirtiest blood by... Oh, how does it work? You never have the clean blood next to the dirty liquid so that the diffusion doesn't start going back the other way. So keeping that efficient. Yeah, not on my list, um, but I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, sort of manipulating the the, um, to, uh, the concentration gradient to, to do that. I'll give you that. Surface area, did I already say you that? Already, you already said that oh. one. What was the question again? How can we make uh, exchange surfaces more efficient? So when a animal has an exchange, make them real thin. Yeah. Make the make the surface thin. Like the tea bag needs to not be made of metal. Yeah. 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 Have a have a membrane that is thin to provide a short diffusion path. Bloody hell, Laura. Yes. 
That's 11 dings all in a row. Oh, my God. Is that my first quiz where I got them all right? I am... It might be. 100% certain. Oh, that is, that is necessary in my life this week. Well, congratulations. Thank M- you. Maybe I made it way too easy. We'll see no. how the people going along at home did it. Shut up, Ron. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Well, I think I probably made that a bit too easy then, didn't I, if you're getting full marks? After... Um, I don't... Um, after, after... Listening back to that, I thought it was quite tricky. I think I just retained it quite well. I think it's one of those processes that makes sense once you're kind of at the end of it, but while you're going through it and learning it, it's a bit... Ooh. Yeah, I just think I was very clever. I think doing the <laughs> marathon in between... In between the episode and the quiz, just really helped me focus. So how did you get on at home? Let's find out if that was too easy. Maybe the quiz was too easy. If everybody listening got 100%, then maybe it was too easy. Mackie? No. Good girl. Oh, you knew you weren't supposed to have that too. You beastie. Um, what were we talking about? Yeah, let us know how you got <laughs> the on <podcast>. the quiz. <laughs> Yeah, we were recording, yes. weren't we? Let us know how you got... Sorry, she was eating a face mask. Um, let us let us know how you got on in the quiz. Uh, I've said that five times now. Um, and then we'll know if Ron did make it too easy. Also, thank you for all your experiments that you've been sending in. Uh, we've got a backlog, so I am going to get stuck into filming some next Which week. Which one are you going to start with? Um, maybe the twirl one. There's a flake for a start, so... <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, because in my head I was like, I'm going to do the twirl one because that comes in two fingers and I can burn one and eat the other. I should have just let you do that because it would have been really funny if you just melted it. <laughs> would it have not worked? Well, no, it's, it's flakes. Is it to do with surface area? I think they just put something in the flakes so it doesn't melt so easily because it's made of flakes so they don't want it to melt. It would melt really easily. Oh, don't don't combine science and chocolate because then I, uh, that is my one true love dead in the water. So listen, thanks for listening. As ever, um, we love you, and we'll be back next week with chemistry. Um, so yeah, we'll see you then. Class dismissed. Oh, that was so nearly the right one, and then you changed the dismissed. <laughs>